All right, I think we've got this started. Um, so welcome again, everybody. Uh, sorry for the technical stuff. You wouldn't know I use this Zoom almost every single day. Um, anyways, um, if you have any questions, as always, either type them in, unmute yourself, happy to have any conversations. And um, today's topic is kind of light. Um, I just was thinking um, about next year. I can't believe it's almost the end of the year. And I was thinking about, you know, what are the different ways that we learn and what are the different ways that we stay current on um, our AEEG skills. And so I just thought I would put together a little um, idea for you. Um, I'm just going to close close these so that it's not in the way of the slides. But so what are five ways that we can keep our AE, AEG skills, our interpretation skills, our usage skills, our, our um, sensor application skills? How do we keep them fresh? <clears throat> because it's AEG to me is if it's a use it or lose it kind of skill. So I think, um, so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about um, today. So first off, I think, which is really important is actually using your device in your unit and performing bedside rounds. And when you provide, provide those bedside rounds, incorporating the nurse, of course, is super important, um, but really talking about how is the AEEG meaningful to this patient and what are, you know, what is the information that we're gleaning? What is the information that we are seeking? And um, how is it maybe helping us to inform families or inform our own treatment plan? And so if you don't already have, you know, even if it's retroactive, you know, rounding on your AEEGs, where you maybe pull your AEEGs from the week or the month and review them and share with them um, to your team how they're valuable, I think it's um, AEEG is hard to keep current and it's hard to keep people proficient. So, um, so I think bedside rounding in real time, where you can take the um, patient situation and combine that with um, you know, what the AEEG is showing you, and maybe you can see some response to a medication or to a treatment that you provided, I think that that begins to show people how dynamic brain function monitoring really is. And, and that is the whole point, right? We have other kinds of assessment tools that we use that are either, you know, screenshots or snapshots in time. And the, the advantage of AEEG is that it's real time. So, um, so I would just invite you, if you haven't yet put together some sort of routine for rounding, um, to use this as a tool to improve and solidify your team's skills around um, AEEG reading. So I've heard of some places that have a certain day of the week and they pull the monitor out if it's not in use and they review um, those tracings if they have babies who are on the AEG, so say it's a one o'clock on a Monday, they'll go to the bedsides and they'll look at those babies. Um, some hospitals do it daily. Sometimes it's the nursing um, leader of the unit plus maybe the physician and they go together and they, they review those. So just some ideas of what other places are doing, um, but, but that will be helpful as well. Um, a sample tracing by email, this is something that, that I used to do for my team as well as I've done it for our AEG coach community over the, the years, um, is sending a sample by email. And um, Mustafa, um, or sorry, excuse me, Mohammed El Dib from, um, I was just reading your name, sorry. So Mohammed El Dib from, uh, from uh, Harvard, from Brigham and w Women, he's actually going to open up his email um, tracing of a week. He's going to actually open that up to everyone. And so as soon as I get the link um, for that, I'll, I'll share it with you. But you could do this in your own hospital. Um, you could create a tracing for, that you could share with, um, with everybody and, and just email out. And um, when we were first starting our AEEG program at Stanford, we would do this monthly. Um, I know other places have done it weekly. And, um, and given away a prize for anybody who answers or put them in drawing for a prize. So, you know, make it fun and make it light, but um, definitely with pattern recognition, the more you see it, the easier it is. So um, again, uh, just an idea, if you're not already doing something like this, um, I've even seen some hospitals, they'll make a poster board and they'll have a place where they just print out a snapshot and they'll um, just have people then text in their answers. Um, so really you can be 
very creative about this. Um, you can do it by email, you can give feedback, um, those kinds of things. I think another great tool, if you're not doing it already, is some sort of journal club. And um, the use of AEEG is certainly um, changing. And um, I think, you know, looking at the data, I just, uh, last week, I think it was, I was um, in Boston at their um, brain monitoring conference. And, um, you know, it was just amazing to me, even just in the last year or two, how many articles, new articles that I hadn't even seen have come out about the use of AEEG. And so if you have people who are unsure about its use, you're still maybe in that um, phase where you're trying to bring it on board with your full faculty, I think a journal club, reviewing some of the evidence, especially the evidence that's coming out around the use of AEEG for the first 72 hours for premature babies. This stuff is really getting um, strong. The evidence for its use and predictive um, value is getting quite high. Um, we used to say that for preemies, it was all about, you know, kind of, it was the power was kind of in the trend and it wasn't very prognostic or predictive, but now I think that the data is really getting strong um, on the predictive value for, for preemies. So maybe going back through and reviewing what is your patient selection criteria? Um, should we be expanding that? Um, you know, are we monitoring all the babies we should and what's the evidence um, for that? I think again, another way like I just did um, last week and in, in, in last month um, by going to Ireland, attending courses and workshops. These are fantastic ways to, again, learn from the experts, to um, see what's happening, what's new, what new research is happening, um, and, and do those things. So I think attending courses and workshops, and there are so many around the globe that are available. I'm traveling on Friday to Oman. I'll be doing a um, workshop for neuro NICU and AEEG. I'll be doing that um, in Muscat in Oman. So, so it really, it's, there's international opportunities. Um, next year in March, I'll be in, um, in um, Munich in Germany doing a workshop. I'll be participating in one in Brazil in May next year. So really these workshops on AEEG, on neuro NICU, they're popping up really all over and I'm sure that there's one local um, to you. Um, I just wanted to put in a little plug for a course I'm doing today um, that is actually starts at 1 p.m. Pacific, but it's available for free trial for the rest of this week as my Thanksgiving present to you. Um, so you can actually view the webinar from last week, which was about um, reading AEEG, neuroassessments, as well as today we're talking about cooling and some neuro, other neuroprotective strategies. So that's an online opportunity, just like, um, just like these calls are as well for you. Um, also, if you are watching this recording and um, are interested, I just want people to know that I'll be doing a Neuro NICU nurses training course again in February of 2018. We'll be in San Diego, California. Um, and the same website where you can get information about the workshop today, the online workshop, at synapsecare.com. You can also um, find information about our conference there. And so please share this with your nurse colleagues, um, or if you're a nurse yourself, please, um, please come along. Um, of course, you're probably all aware, and some of you are graduates of my online AEEG course, but um, that is continuing to be offered and available for groups. So um, if you haven't taken that course and you're looking for more information and to take a deeper dive, of course, you, you can do that. And then, of course, you can continue to attend these monthly calls. I think these are a great way that we can talk about the nuances of using AEEG um, for our, you know, in our units and answering specific questions. So these will continue to be free every um, month um, through 2018 as well. So. We, we try to do the last Monday of the month. I always say last Friday. It's always it's last Monday, uh, the last Monday of the month. Um, and uh, I think that these are a great way to get your, your practical questions answered. And of course, we like to do tracings from time to time as well or review articles. So a little bit of all of what we talked about. Um, but I am always open to hearing what would be, again, more useful to you, what are more things you need. And, um, and happy to, um, to work on those um, as well. So anyways, I think that that was really all I wanted to prepare was just kind of as we're moving into the holiday season and into next year, 
wanted to give you some ideas of things that you might want to implement in your unit as you're looking towards next year and planning your educational opportunities and just your workflow. Um, what are things that you could be doing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis um, to improve your skills around AEEG? Because I do truly believe um, that it is a use it or lose it um, situation. So, um, so anyways, that was really all I kind of prepared for today, but I'm happy to to answer questions if there are, um, are other questions.